are back. Uh, episode four, Rings of Power. So it starts with the queen having like visions of the doom of Numenor. And then there is this crowd that's upset that there's an elf in Numenor because they're afraid that elves are going to take their jobs. I, I, this is obviously some sort of allegory for AI. Are you kidding me? Really? Really? Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, no, that that was it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it was it's kind of a terrible scene. I it just it, it takes you out because it's so blatant and what it's referencing and it's not it doesn't feel natural to the story at all. Then we have the chancellor calming people down and then we Apparently, the Isildur sister and the Chancellor's son have like a romance go now is going to happen. That's plot, a new plot added on to all the other plots that we already have. Um, great, great. We need more plots. Uh, yeah, include on top of that, like as a side bonus, we have like daddy issues between the son and the Chancellor. Okay, fine. Uh, and then Galadriel. Uh, pisses off the queen so much, gets thrown into prison. Just like how Brown got thrown into prison last episode. I didn't even mention that last episode, but yeah, that happened. Um, and they have some conversations in prison. I mean, I'm surprised she was, wasn't already in prison. She's so bad. Like, she, she's so terrible at diplomacy. Like, this is the character that was good at diplomacy in a family that was bad at diplomacy. What? Okay. Whatever. Okay. So we have a sealed door kicking himself and accidentally his friends off uh, the Sea Guard, or at least the recruits to become the Sea Guard, because he wants to go to the West to, I guess, find himself or something. The conflict between his friends, I think, the delivery of the dialogue and their and their interactions work really well. It's just that because we've had no time to set these people up, we have no frame of reference for their relationship and how this is straining it so because there's no setup you don't really you're not really connected with them but like the scene in isolation of i think is fine it's just it's kind of not supported um too well it's not terrible then we get to the elf guy in the southlands and we meet the leader of the orcs oh my gosh why are we with this elf guy, let's focus on this story because this story is by far the most interesting idea this entire show has. If I'm understanding this right, it appears that the leader of this group of orcs is one of the original elves that Morgoth took and tortured to like make the orcs. At least that's that's how I'm reading it because they're calling him father. Um, if that's so, that is, um, that's a very cool idea because that is a part of the lore that Tolkien did not, very deliberately didn't explore. He was very conflicted about the origins of the orcs and this, and drawing from that kind of hole in the lore is actually a great idea because because even Tolkien was unsatisfied with it. Um, and the character itself was very interesting and uh, the scene with him was too short, basically. The little thing where he's like, he's like, send a message to these people and then they cut away from him. And then at the end, you, you hear the message delivered by the elf guy. And I'm like, why didn't we hear it from out of his mouth? Because it would have been way more interesting out of his mouth. Just, is there, like that character is, is, is interesting. There's, there's like an idea there that, that, is, that would be fun to explore. It's a shame it's going to be wasted in this story with these writers. Because I, I, I like the concept. And I, I think the actor is... is is bringing something to the role that at least, or maybe my maybe my standards have gotten so low. I don't know. Yeah, that 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 was cool. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. Like we cut away from 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 that interesting thing. So now, now we're back with the human guys, um, the, and the healer lady and her son, and her son's trying to get food. And then there's like a chase scene, uh, a hiding sequence, which I think is shot pretty well when he's hiding in the thing. Like I, the cinematography of that is good. I wish I cared about him more, but. Again, the characters are not grabbing me. The The villages of the Southlands are holed up in this tower, and Adar, uh, the, the elf leader of the orcs, 
uh, tells them that they can live if they leave the tower and swear fealty to them. So that that's kind of where that ends off. So Elrond and Durin stuff. So Durin and the dwarves are hiding that they're mining Mithril and that they've discovered Mithril and um, through some shenanigans, Elrond finds out and they have a co- confront each other. And I, I liked that scene. Uh, he's made, s- Durin, so Durin makes Elrond swear an oath not to tell uh, anyone about Mithril. Uh, if he ends up breaking that oath, I am going to lose my shit. This setting, ha- oaths have such power and you, you you can't just break them, okay? Like, so if they try to go for like a, oh, he has to break, I, I, I will lose my mind. I will. I will. Okay? I, I'm just warning that ahead of time if, if that ends up happening. Because, I mean, the entirety of the Silmarillion was driven by the oath of Feanor. Finrod's death was driven by his oath to Baron's family. Even in the Lord of the Rings, the broken oath to a seal lore was so powerful that they're these, this army lingered on for ghosts for thousands of years. Do like Elrond cannot break this. Okay, I'm glad. I'm. I, I, I'm. All right. I hope. I hope. I hope they don't go the direction I think they're going with this. But I am concerned, very concerned. Uh, at the end of that scene, there is like a cave in that they rush in to like help people, or there's and then they cut away. That is so, this is, I keep bringing this up, but I will, like, they, they do not, the moment you get into the scene, and there's, like, momentum in the scene, they cut away. I think I was on board for the Elrond Durin scenes, like, I was, and that, the, that scene, and their conflict, and they're, like, you're in it, and then something happens, like, a cave-in, and they rush in, and you're, like, oh my god, and they, they rush in, and you think, okay, this is a moment to, to solidify the friendship of Elrond helping him, or doing this, and you're, like, your brain is, is geared to that moment, you're, like, okay, there, there's momentum, there's narrative focus. And then they immediately cut away before you see that. And you're like, well, what? And you know what they cut away to? The Sildur sisters, like, random romance with the Chancellor's son. That, that is what they did. Caven, cut to that. What are you doing? That, that is not where our focus is. That's not. It's not. And then when you cut back, it's already happened. It's already thing. They're singing, they're singing to the stone to try to let people out. And, and Durin's fine. And and Elrond's fine. I guess they didn't get hit in the cave and that didn't happen. Like like and and everyone turns out fine. No one died in the cave in and all this. Like the where the story was, it's gone. They cut that out. Why did they cut that out? That's when the story that was it's like they, they don't even know where their story is. Durin is shouting about his father, that he's shutting down the mithril production and, and whatnot, uh, which is a scene I suspect was in the original script, and I'll explain why in a minute said about his father and he's like doesn't want to see him again and then Elrond talks about his father and how his father is by the way like some stars in the sky and he misses his father and wishes he could be with his father and that which I I enjoyed that scene because I enjoyed them talking about Arendil but it was very shoehorned like the, it wasn't very natural the way they blocked the scene I think that story actually was relevant to the conflict at hand it's just the way they made Elrond say it just kind of felt a little forced but it's a, that's a small ish gripe compared to my bigger gripes and i liked him talking about that i did it was it was fun to hear it uh, and him missing his father because that's it's so obviously true but it's nice to hear him say and it actually feeds into the story where durin goes to his father and and, and reconciles with his father and the scene itself like the acting and everything in it is great the problem is we never saw the argument that caused them to be to, we have no context for this relationship. We have seen Durin with his father once, and they weren't really arguing that much. I mean, they were arguing a little bit, but it, it, this whole concept of them being estranged and them rekindling, like, the argument that, that Durin goes in there to apologize for is off screen. We do not know the how bad it is, or what, like we, we don't know anything. So we have this reconciliation for, for conflict that the show never introduced. They never introduced it, which is a shame because I think the scene itself is good. I like the scene. I like the acting in it. It was great. But we don't see the conflict that's resolving. So we don't get the satisfaction of, oh, these fo- they're finally reconciling. Or like, oh, this is like our second scene with these people. Uh, who is writing this? It's like they don't understand where their narrative, where their focus is. Like, what is this story about? The, 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 the narrative through line 
for the story where the where the where the soul is the emotion is where the characters are where like that's not what they're showing and then I mean, go back to Galadriel and she's been they're they're going to exile her from the island and she's going to get the boat that she wanted but now she wants to get them to raise an army to go save the Southlands and prop up Halbrand as their king because she, she suspects that he is their long lost king and Brand's not on board with this, which is interesting. She has this conversation with Halbrand, which is probably the most Sauron e he's been so far, just by sheer like like what do they fear? Like that, like basically, basically, Sauron is coaching Galadriel in basic in like psychology, which is really funny actually. I I like it just for the pure comedy of the concept. It's it's not actually good, but damn, is it funny? Um. Uh, and then she gets in her idea to go, like, confront the queen's father. I haven't even mentioned this. She's the queen regent. If I'm understanding this right, her father, like, wanted to rekindle a connection with the elves. And the people hated that idea so much that they rebelled against him. And so she took over so to keep the peace of the country while he's kind of technically a shut-in in his own kingdom. Okay, so she goes up, she goes to him, finds out his health is failing. The Queen Regent is there, and she and Galadriel have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and they bond over being, like, the only ones to know, like, see the doom coming. Because <sighs> she sees visions of doom, and she believes that Galadriel's kicking, start kicking it off. Galadriel's trying to convince her to help her, and Galadriel's not very good at this. Or at least, well, I should say, this version of Galadriel is not very good at convincing people of anything. And they're like, she's like, no, you're on the boat, next boat regardless of how I feel about you, because she's changed her opinion on her based on that conversation, sort of. And then she gets on the boat, and as she's leaving, their, like, holy tree starts starts losing leaves, which has been established earlier in the show, uh, that religiously they see it, see it as the tears of the Valar, so she suddenly interprets it as that the Valar want Galadriel to stay, which means, like, Galadriel is, is just being bailed out like by the gods the Valar aren't gods they're more like archangels but for the sake of argument let's call them gods she nothing that she did helped bring about what she wanted it, she she screwed it up so badly and then gets shipped off and then the gods save her <sighs> and which is which is such boring writing oh my god but anyway she's come back they, they, they don't ship her off and they're like, actually, we are going to help you. The Numenor queen announces that she's going to raise an army to go down to the Southlands to help the Southlands, which is good for the Southlands. because As we know, they're about to get attacked by Adar and, and his orcs. Um, or I should say they are being attacked by them. There are some things. There is a lot more things in this episode I like. That, that, this is true. I, I think this is definitely my favorite episode so far. Um the ratio to things that I found enjoyable to things that I found deeply frustrating was a more tolerable ratio than previous episodes. So that's nice. Um, on to the next one. Mm -hmm.